So my name is Bradley of Helium 10, not to be confused with the other Bradley of Helium 10, but he kind of changed how I think about products and advertising and entrepreneurship and risk taking and just the entire back end. Thank you so much for joining with me, Bradley. I'm so excited, y'all, because Bradley's actually the one who trained me whenever I got my first full-time job at Helium 10. So y'all are going to be in great hands. So Bradley, can you kind of introduce yourself, explain your experience with e-commerce, and then how you got into Helium 10? Yeah, so my name is Bradley of Helium 10, not to be confused with the other Bradley of Helium 10, right? And yeah. both of our names start with an S, so those emails get a little bit confusing every now and then. We, <laughs> we cross over a little bit. And uh, I started selling on Amazon with a private label company and... 2018, I want to say, right at the end of 18, maybe going into 19. And um, I had a great mentor that really just kind of changed the way I view the world. He didn't hold my hand and show me exactly what to do, but he kind of changed how I think about products and advertising and entrepreneurship and risk taking and just the entire back end stuff that's almost subconscious, right? So I'll always be grateful for that, but like many other people, I did most of my actual learning and experience getting, watching lots of YouTube videos, mm -hmm. right? Spending lots of hours in Black Box and on Amazon, just looking for anything, anywhere I can, you know, just constantly trying to learn. And through all of that, I, it turns out I have some pretty particular uh, methods for finding products and validating and things. And I know that now because everyone tells me. Because now, mm -hmm. now I'm in a position to talk with people about how we do stuff on Amazon. Turns out I'm kind of on an island, right? But that's okay. Yeah, and I love like just this topic for this video because there's so many different strategies and methods to finding products to validating products. Y'all, there's no one size fits all method. Like there's so many different routes. So that's why I'm excited for Bradley to kind of share his tips and tricks for y'all. So starting e-commerce, it all starts with finding a product to sell, but there's so many different ways to find products. So what's some of the easier ways we can find products to sell initially? I would say if, if anyone watching this right now came and they sat down with me, they want to talk about this. I said, Bradley, I'm serious. I'm willing to work. I just need some help. How can I find a good product, right? A few years ago, we've told you to go to Black Box. And Black Box is still a very viable option. To this day, that's my number one, right? But what I'd learned over the years, especially as social media and everything we have now has grown, right? Namely, TikTok, YouTube shorts. It's kind of changed the way we consume content, right? What I've noticed recently is that you can passively do product research, right? Keep it in the back of your mind. I am an Amazon seller or I am an entrepreneur. I am looking for products. If I see it, I'm going to ask myself, could I sell this? Should I sell this? Is there a chance of it to work, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to beat around the bush and give you, you know, weird metaphors. It's not the matrix. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. What I've noticed in recent years is that the majority of products that people show on TikTok and YouTube shorts, especially those ones where it's either organization, right, just cleaning something up or putting something in bins and labels and making it look all nice and pretty, those are people promoting their products, right? I guarantee you every single time they're selling that product, usually on Amazon, maybe Shopify, but let's, let's keep it on Amazon, right? And they have a link to it, right? Because that's how it works. There's no kind of PPC spend you, that will work as well as 100 million people watching you tear apart your entire kitchen and put labels on everything. Mm -hmm. Some of the biggest product opportunities I've ever found on Amazon myself, I saw on TikTok first. A couple of years ago, you might remember the Magic Tap, right? Automatic milk dispenser, all of that stuff. You see people doing it. That was a product on Amazon that was making over 20 grand each per listing with less than 10 reviews. Right. For, any, for anyone that's kind of intermediate and in talking Amazon, they know that's, that's the gold standard, right? That's your needle in a haystack that's one in a million that builds your business. So I really love the idea of telling people to just pay attention to what they're watching. 
right? right? If something's getting a lot of traction, if there is any kind of product in there whatsoever, right? Any container, any labeler, any, if it does something, that is deliberate. Treat everything like it is deliberate. There's no mistake, right? And that's, right. I think that's the best way to approach passively doing your product research. Same yeah, goes in stores. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in-person stores, social media, you can even go to Amazon.com, look at new releases, maybe even look at some bestsellers just to get an idea of, okay, like, what are people buying all the time? And then kind of narrow down your research from there. So let's say we are in a store, we are shopping, and we find this cute little stuffed animal or something random, right? And now I want to say, okay, like, how much money are people making with this product? Is there demand? What's the next step? Where would we go? Will we go Amazon.com and use Chrome extension? Or what are your thoughts? Well, I'm not entirely sure what your the gist of your audience is catered towards. Because if if they're into they're into retail arbitrage, right? This is a very different conversation. Yeah, so it's gonna be more private label based. Don't tell anyone else, but I'm a private label guy. I don't I don't care about wholesale, O A R A. We're, we're all <laughs> private label over here, right? You yeah. want to you wanna succeed. Let's talk private label. Mm -hmm. But regardless, I, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Please don't be upset with me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a great point, right? Because this is what I also tell people. This is, again, a fundamental thing that if you can understand this and lock this in, it will continue to benefit you indefinitely. I used to be on the sales team with Helium 10. The majority of my job was demonstrating the software for people, right? And this is one of the tips I always gave them. The way you need to think about, one, validating your product that you saw in a store or at a friend's house, you can see it anywhere. That's why this works, is you need to, you need to ask yourself, okay, I see this. I like it. I want to know if there's a market for it. What do I type in? What do I search for to find it? Right. And it's okay to take an honest guess. And if you get it wrong, nothing bad's going to happen. If I saw what you just held up, do I know if that's a beanie baby or a whatever? No, I don't. Do I know the materials, the size? The I don't know any of that. So mm -hmm. let me just take an honest guess. Stuffed giraffe, right? Let's just start there and let's get digging. And later down the road, when you get into keyword research, which I think is very important, very heavy lifting. That's the same way I recommend going about it. Ask yourself, if I saw this at my mom's house over Christmas, if I saw this at a friend's house, if I saw this in Walmart, right? I didn't know the brand. I didn't know what they call it. What would I search in Sir, Amazon to find it, right? And that's how the majority of us use Amazon. So it's mm -hmm. a really good strategy, in my opinion. I agree. That's a great tip. So I wanted you to kind of show like, okay, and it doesn't have to be a stuffed giraffe. But let's say like someone just finds a product in a store. How could they start using Helium 10's Chrome extension to start digging in deeper and see that data? Whether it's their top keywords for a product you're typing in or, you know, the sales per month, the reviews, all that. Yeah, absolutely. Let me go ahead and start sharing my screen. All right. Can you see me? Uh, yes, we do. Perfect. Okay. So let's say we saw your little stuffed giraffe, right? It's a good example. <laughs> I just got it from the zoo. <laughs> the zoo? Yeah. It's been so long since I've been. I'm not sure if I can spell giraffe, so we're just going to ignore that. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I, I, I hate to think about what you paid for it if you got it at the souvenir shop in a zoo. I know. But... <laughs> it was overpriced. Cute little but fella, but... Out. They got their 30% profit margin off you if they um, sold it. Yeah, episode. they did, for sure. <laughs> okay, so at this point, we don't know exactly which one it is, right? But that's mm -hmm. okay, because no matter what, the concept is what we're really looking for. Are people interested in buying little stuffed giraffes, right? Right. If it makes sense to move forward on the product, we'll figure out the specifics, like the size and shape, face, stuff like that later. Let's just see. So I have the extension here pinned. Most of you should have the extension or already have it. It's absolutely free. There's no good reason not to have it. What are you doing? You want to make money on Amazon and you don't have the free extension? 
<laughs> Come on, let's be serious. Oh, you're my favorite. <laughs> so we we click on our extension and right here at the top, X-ray, right? We give that a second to load and you can see what it's doing is it's searching Amazon for small stuffed giraffe. Mm -hmm. Small stuffed giraffe has 25 search volume. That's way oh, too right. easy, right? Yeah. That tells me already, maybe I am restricting the data, right? It's not the Amazon's fault. It's not Helium 10's fault. Maybe I'm putting too much of a bottleneck on this. Let me just get rid of stuffed giraffe. Uh, might be worth making sure I, I spelled giraffe right too, right? Maybe there's only 25 other people in the United States that can't spell giraffe. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not good at spelling either. I always just rely on the pop-up from Helium 10 when I'm typing. <laughs> okay, so we're at 37.59. A little bit better, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to get into actually validating it per se. We'll save that for a, a, a full-length product, yeah. right? But let we can get into our numbers. So immediately. The things I want to know about this product, search volume, right? There mm -hmm. has to be an interest in the product. It doesn't matter what you sell, how good it is, how revolutionary it is, how original it is. If nobody is looking to purchase it, then you have two options. Fail miserably or create some sort of guerrilla social media campaign where all of a sudden it gets hundreds of millions of views and you've literally generated an entire market for a product. Mm -hmm. I'll let you know now, realistically, if you could do that, you probably wouldn't be watching this video. Maybe you can do it one day, but that's a very demanding thing, right? Multi-million dollar corporations can't do that successfully. Mm -hmm. So the search volume's a bit low. For my liking, but that's okay, right? Because for all we know, stuffed animal, right? Stuffed giraffe counts as an animal. That's mm -hmm. a related keyword. I guarantee right. you that is probably over 100,000 search volume. For just sure. as a quick example. What I want to know, secondly, is are people making money here, right? Is this worth our time? So we can see in the revenue column, this guy's making six figures. Melissa and Doug stuffed giraffe. It's a $90 stuffed giraffe. Wow. Oh my gosh, and it's four feet tall. <laughs> Over four feet tall. Wow. <laughs> That's almost as tall as me. I know what everyone in my family is getting for Christmas. <laughs> yes, just because I want to see where they put it, right? Good luck with that thing. <laughs> we can see lots of great information in here. I'm going to save the, the main focal points of reviews, search volume, and revenue for when we get into actually finding products and then actually validating them. But for, okay. the, for our example of let's go ahead and see if there's a market for this. I want to know if there's search volume. I want to see if they're making money. And now maybe let's look at a little bit of the competition, right? We're looking for private label products. Most of these have two sellers which probably means, it's hard to say without looking into it, it's very likely that these are private label products that are also being sold under um, Amazon or being sold as refurbished returns, things of that nature, because right. that's pretty common, right? And since it is a stuffed animal, it's a safe bet that you could get away with doing that, right? It's not like mm -hmm. a drinking glass that's been used and people yeah. don't want to buy that. The reviews tell me a lot about the age of this market and my likelihood to penetrate it, right? Because if you have a great product that has a lot of people looking for it and you can't get on the first couple of pages on Amazon, you're in the shadow realm, right? right. And again, little tip, I'm sure I said this to you when we were doing training. I've said this to people in one-on-one -on -one meetings a thousand times. I have a question for you, Kaylee. Mm -hmm. How often do you shop on Amazon? Oh, pretty often. Like, I probably order something like once a month. Oh, that's not bad. I thought you were going to say once bad. a day. I mean, it'll be a big order because I go on, like, shopping sprees and then... Yeah, you just... I'll be still <laughs> <in for a while. laughs> You're like, all right, I got it. Time to get the yeah. boxes. UPS man's going to hate me this week. I know. I need to get the mat high boxes <laughs> from Beyonce. <laughs> oh, no. Well, as an Amazon shopper, how often do you find yourself 
scrolling down and down. Just wait, we're getting there and down. You still haven't bought anything, right? Whatever you were searching for. Mm -hmm. We're going. I promise. Okay. Page two. And now, for dramatic effect, I'm not going to do it, right? But you get the idea. We scroll all the way down again. Now we're on right. page three. Oh, no, you muted. <laughs> it's okay. Never even happened. How often <laughs> do you find yourself buying something from page three, four, five? Never. Like, always two max. Precisely. So my point is... The reason we want to sell on Amazon is because without question, it is the biggest e-commerce marketplace in the world. There mm -hmm. are millions of shoppers on here every single day that are looking for products to buy. And all we have to do is figure out where it makes sense for us to sell a product. Exactly. To get the benefit of that, you really need to be able to get on the first couple of pages. Right? So for me, that's the trifecta of product research and product validation. Is there a market for it? The search volume, right? Can we get on the first couple of pages? Because if we can't get there, then the search volume isn't really gonna help us. And then finally, is it profitable? Does it make sense? Are people really buying this? If people right. spend $90 on a four foot giraffe, I'm not gonna laugh at them. I'm gonna ask, well, who makes four foot giraffes? How much will it cost me, right? Mm -hmm. so I'd say that's my product validation yeah that was super helpful and can you quickly show people like how to see if a product's profitable absolutely I kind of want to go back to the four foot giraffe I want to do it I'm interested now <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm really invested in this guy okay so we have a nice little 30 percent discount not surprising oh, nice. it is December yeah so we're just going to scroll down, and here we have the profitability calculator. I'll say, if if you're, I'm telling you, if you need another reason to have this Chrome extension, even without selling on Amazon yet, I love seeing the price history of a product. Oh, me too. I Every time I make a major purchase, I check the price history. If I'm buying a mattress, well, one, it's going to be from Amazon. That says a lot about me come to your own conclusions on that. <laughs> Secondly, I'm going to find one that has dropped its price recently. Looks like this used to go for 101.99, went down to 70, and now we're back at 86, 83. Mm -hmm. Regardless, let's see how much it costs. Let's check the profitability. Oh. So, we're estimating that they cost 16.80 to make. So we could round that up and say about $20, right? And that's giving them quite a bit of headroom. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling what really is ruining the profitability of this product is going to be coming down to the storage fees, mm -hmm. right? Since it's such a large product. Yeah, we're talking about four foot or five foot tall boxes. I mean, the base of it's probably two by three, something along those lines. So... They, I mean, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't recommend anybody interested in getting into Amazon goes and picks out a four foot stuffed giraffe <laughs> to start selling, right? It's I too agree. big. It's too complicated. Too small, lightweight. Yeah. For me, I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to hold back from you. 10 to $15 price range, less than.